let's go back to the spare bedroom, also known as the tree room, the tarot room, or the library. <laughs> Take your pick. I want to shout out all of the new subscribers who joined because they saw Mac or Bonnie's video. Thank you so much for wandering over here and for joining the Peeling fam. Speaking of which, let me do a quick health update. I went into the ER about a week and a half ago and they gave me a bunch of tests, gave me a bunch of fluids, and then sent me home. Well, then they called back and said, oh, we got one of our tests back and we need you to come back in. <laughs> so back in I went and was there for a few more days. I am at home now, recovering well. I need to do some follow-up and then I'll need to do a bit more follow-up down the road to hopefully prevent this from happening again. But for now, my focus is on just taking my antibiotics and conquering the infection and getting lots and lots of rest. I decided that as far as peeling my clutter went, I felt okay enough to sit at my desk and turn this from a minimalist design to a maximalist dream come true. So what I'm doing is I've pulled out a bunch of things. I've got miscellaneous bags that different tarot decks can go into. I've got these hangers that I'm going to put my tarot cloths onto because I have collected some tarot cloths over time. I have a bunch of tarot books and I'm keeping the ones that I use regularly close at hand and I'm going to put the other ones onto shelves behind me. I have lots of crystals, but I'm going to think about where to put those after I decide which of these tarot cloths I am going to use right now because I figure I will just use one for a while and then rotate to another. That is something that my ADD is pretty happy about. I need to come up with a different place to put these tarot bags because these clear bins I got in order to put some decks in them. And the decks I'm putting in them are ones that come in little tuck boxes because I'm not a fan of tuck boxes. Instead, I'm going to put them in bags into the bin and there are little shelves on the desk, which you will see in the after footage. You can kind of see it a little bit on the right side, but you'll see it better at that point. I have a goodly number of cloths, <laughs> more than I realized. So I am going to need, I think I have four of these hangers and they're of course for pants or scarves or something like that where you're able to maximize how many you can put on one hanger but i'm just going to use them for cloths now let's give a quick update on a colt in between my two visits to the hospital i <laughs> Well, Colt started having issues and I was concerned that maybe surgery would be required. It wasn't, it was just some kind of like inflammation. So I'm glad about that. But one of my sisters took him to the vet for me because I had no energy and I had just come back from the ER the first time. So, <laughs> so anyway, she took him in, bless her heart and he was put on some we're all on antibiotics around here and he is back to his chaos creating self he is out of his cone so we're 
he is recovering faster than I have. <laughs> I have to say I'm pretty happy about that because I was very, very worried about what to do. And it just was a total press on my mind. So I was very glad when he was able to get in, was seen, started seeming better, and then he was okay while I had to go back into the hospital. I chose a cloth that's quite pretty, but as I look at it, I felt like it was hard to really see the crystals on this cloth, so I think I'm going to use this specific cloth as a travel cloth. So when I go to restaurants, etc., it can just be colorful on the table, and that's fine. Whereas this one, I is a little bit more subdued. The pattern is more subdued, so I feel like I can add a bit more in the way of embellishments with all of these crystals that I have. That is my next step is going through my crystals and setting them out to see what I want to put around the cloth there. I'm thinking I'll have a few clusters and go from there. Uh, one thing I should mention is just disregard the bruise on my arm. I am difficult to draw blood from and so I always come home from hospital visits with a bit of bruising. I am also back on oxygen for now. This is a temporary measure and it is helping me in my opinion so I just want to mention it. I am a proud member of the Keeping It Real Club, so I'm keeping it real with you by letting you know what's going on there. Okay, back to it. Let's talk about what happens when you do get sick or when you are not feeling well and but you still want to declutter some. I had done a bit of resting at this point and I did feel like I was up to a little bit of activity. I didn't want to do significant activity. I did get my extra <laughs> hangers so I could work on that but the idea of sorting stuff and actually letting stuff go felt a little bit overwhelming for me in this state so I thought you know what maybe it is time to beautify my surroundings a little bit. I've got a few things that I want to hang and I'm not sure how to hang them. I actually do have some hooks that are used for the curtains. So again, I could go ahead and put those up, but that is something that I just did not feel up to doing is figuring out where exactly to put those and then standing up. Oh no, the horror. <laughs> Don't make me stand up. <laughs> and that's really what I've found when it comes to decluttering or doing any kind of cleaning, maintenance, organizing work when I'm not feeling well. If I really don't feel well, of course, I'm just going to rest and not worry about it. But I did want to do something. I was in the hospital for a few days. I laid around and relaxed after that to recover. Don't get me wrong, I am going to continue to do that. I will take it easy because I do not want any setbacks. Life offers plenty of challenges as it is. I absolutely do not need to add to it. So I have settled on a bunch of different crystals that I'm going to have right around my particular cloth. I have a singing bowl that is right above the cloth. I also have a filming setup that I was too tired 
to set up for this particular video so instead I just filmed from behind using my tripod. Now <laughs> I thought I need to make some space for some of my tarot books and that means I need to let go of more books. It was always my plan to go ahead and declutter again from these particular shelves, but once I got started, I just, I realized that I had books alphabetized in the wrong place. I had other books that I felt very comfortable letting go of and others I just wasn't sure about so I just went ahead and kind of shifted things around. I did get a pile of books about seven or eight that I am just letting go of in addition but I'm just clearing up some space here for some of these books. Now these shelves are adjustable but again, I felt too tired to shift <laughs> the different shelves. And so I ended up putting some of the taller books kind of on their side. And I will get to that when I'm ready. Future me's got some work ahead, but <laughs> that's okay. Because present me is in recovery. And that is what is most important. I am continuing to use a lesson that I learned with all of my work in the spare bedroom, which is I don't need to collect every single book that an author has written. So several of the books that I managed to let go were of authors that I have collected an assortment of their books. And I was like, you know what? I really like these three, these two, I don't even remember. So I'm going to let those go. Now here are a bunch that <laughs> some were able to fit just fine, but a couple needed to be on their side for now until I get the spacing on the shelves sorted. So I'll work that out down the road and get to it. Here are the results I forgot to take before, <laughs> before footage. But here is the after and you can see those little shelves where those cubbies just fit into those little bins and there is a big bed underneath for the dogs and they both are able to fit on that which is great. I thought I would do a little tarot reading for you. I'm using the Mystic Soul Tarot and I'm just waiting for cards to jump out as I shuffle them. So that's what I'm doing for now. We'll see what comes out. This cardstock is a little bit stiff. That's okay. It's a really fun, modern and colorful deck that I like. It has a very nice energy. So now let's go ahead and shuffle for some more. And I've got four cards here, so let's get started. All right, first card is the lovers. Now the lovers card is not always about a romantic couple, but it is about someone that you have a very close relationship with. And now we've got the five of swords. This card suggests winning at all costs. And so when I put these cards together, I think to myself, you might be in a situation where someone that you're close to comes to you about a concern and you need to focus on what is important to you and not on who wins or who loses. Sometimes we can get caught up in who's right and who's wrong, but instead of that, I just suggest thinking about 
or shifting the focus from that to what is really important to you. I'm going to look at the last three cards as a separate clump because they all came out together. So we have the Ace of Wands, the Page of Wands, and the Eight of Wands, which is pretty unusual. We've got all wand energy here. Wands are about creativity and things that inspire and motivate you. So I interpret that to mean if you've had an idea that's been sort of nudging at your mind, something new that you want to do that you haven't done before, take hold of that idea and do it. Pursue it. Follow that dream. If any of this resonates with you, let it simmer in your mind for a little bit and then take action in a way that feels good to you.